Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. And, uh, last Sunday, we started talking about uh, his names. We got, we got kind of stopped on the very first one, so we didn't get past that. So uh, we're going to go ahead and get with that. Glory to God. Uh, the Holy Spirit of God. There are at least 25 names in the Old and New Testament that refer to the Holy Ghost. Uh, we started talking last week about the Spirit, and um, the Greek and Hebrew words translated meaning breath of wind. We talked about the holy wind of God, and uh, that thought along the lines of the name the Spirit is the innermost part of God going into man. When we were born again, we were born of His Spirit. Amen? We were born of the Spirit of the living God. His Spirit went into us and made us new creatures in Christ. Glory to God. And we became alive unto God. Can you say Amen. I said, we became alive unto God. His spirit entered into us, and our, the life of his spirit transformed our spirits from dead men, spiritually dead men and women, and the men and women alive unto God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Can you say amen to that? That's worth shouting over, somebody. I said, that's worth shouting over. Hallelujah. He went into us, praise God. Amen. And so the, the wind of God, you know, it's sovereign. It goes where, you know, the Holy Ghost goes where he wants to go. He manifests the way he wants to manifest. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Glory to God. All right, somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. The second name of God that we have for the Holy Ghost is the Spirit of God. Look at Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Amen. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. It's good to see you guys all closer up here. Amen. Know ye not that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. Now this, the thought behind the being called the Spirit of God designates his divine origin. Where the Holy Ghost came from. He came out of God. Amen. He came out of God. He is, he proceeds from God. His origin is in God. He is God. He's manifest as the third person of the Godhead. And that's the Spirit that's in you. I'm glad he's in me. And that it's God living on the inside of me. Can you say amen to that? Amen. I'm glad I don't have a different spirit. I don't have the spirit of this world. I got the spirit of the living God. Can you shout hallelujah over that? Amen. Now, I'm not going to go out. I, I, we can go out here and rewrite the name on the church. church says first church of the frozen chosen. And we can be the Holy Ghost church. Amen. Who wants to be a Holy Ghost church? Amen. All right. Hallelujah. Praise God. And then the next, the next name we have here is the, the spirit of Jehovah. Now that is, if you look in your King James Bible, uh, uh, where the word Lord is written in, in what they call small caps. Okay, you got the, you got the uh, capital letters, but they're small caps. And, and that word, when you see the word Lord in the Bible written in small caps, it comes out of that four-letter Hebrew transliteration of Y-H-W-H. Okay, and that is uh, where you get, you heard the term Yahweh. You know, they put a vowel and they put an A and they put an E and they got Yahweh out of that. The German, when the Germans were translating, and, and uh, the word Jehovah came out of the German translation where they took the J, the Y, and substituted a J because the Hebrews didn't have a, a symbol that represented a J. Okay? And then they took the W, you know, Germans, they pronounce the W's with a V, you know? So it's Volkswagen, it's not a Volkswagen, it's a Volkswagen. Okay? And then they put vowels in there in, in between the J, um, H V H and came up with Jehovah. Okay, so that's where Jehovah comes from. Yahweh and Jehovah come from the same Hebrew letters Y H W H. Okay, and it means Lord. It means Lord, and not only does it mean Lord, it is Israel's covenant keeping God. Can you say Hallelujah? I said, amen. So he's a spirit of Jehovah, or the spirit of the Lord, but that comes from those letters, so it means he's the spirit of Jehovah. He is the spirit of Jehovah. He is the covenant-keeping God. He is the spirit that comes of the covenant-keeping God. Glory to God. God keeps covenant. Can you say amen? amen? And see, God's got a covenant with you. Through Jesus Christ, through the blood of Jesus, when you came into the kingdom. He, that spirit of God has come to enforce the covenant in your life, praise God. And we're born of that spirit, the spirit of the covenant, of the covenant keeping God. God is a covenant keeping God. Say, my God, my God. is a covenant keeping God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Now think about that. Dr. Schofield in his Bible says that, you know, the name Jehovah is a revelation of the self-existent God who keeps covenant. Okay, and then the hyphenated names of Jehovah, you know, uh, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah the Sidkenu, Jehovah uh, Jireh, all the, you know, Jehovah, the, the Lord our provider, the Lord our healer, the Lord our peace, the Lord our banner of victory, the Lord our righteousness, are all, um, are all progressive, or not progressive, what's the word he used for? A continuing self-revelation of the covenant-keeping God and parts of the covenant that he, he, he highlights. So Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that healeth thee, is God keeps covenant. Say God keeps covenant. And in keeping covenant, he's the covenant of healing. You have a covenant of healing with the covenant keeping God. When he said, I am Jehovah Shalom, you have a covenant of peace with the covenant keeping God. Amen. When he said, I'm Jehovah Jireh, you have a covenant of prosperity with the covenant keeping God. Can you say amen? Amen. Say, somebody else say Glory. Hallelujah. I think I'm going to stay back here a little bit more. I've been running up there. Too. All right. Glory to God. He, so he is the spirit of the covenant keeping God. Amen. That means he is here and enforcing in your life the covenant that God's made with you through Jesus Christ. Can you shout over that? Amen. Can you shout over being saved? Can you shout because you're filled with the Holy Ghost? Or can you shout because you got a God who keeps covenant and will not break it with you? Glory to God. Can you shout because he sent his spirit, the Holy Ghost, glory to God, into the earth, praise God, to force and enforce and keep that covenant with you? Somebody shout hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Glory to God. Look, it's 23 times in the American Standard Version that, you know, the word Lord is translated Jehovah. 23 times. Amen. We have a reference to the covenant-keeping God. And he is the spirit of that covenant-keeping God. Hallelujah. When the Holy Ghost comes to lead you, when the Holy Ghost comes to guide you, when the spirit of the living God, when the spirit of Jehovah shows up, he will lead you. He will guide you, what? Into the benefits and blessings of the covenant. I should have had three runners by now. I said I should have had at least three. One. Can I get two? Can I, no. Okay. Just. Well, I got two. Hallelujah. Amen. Joggers, not quite. Oh, there goes a the third one. Hallelujah. Amen. He is the Spirit. God's Spirit comes, and He comes to enforce the. He comes to force the works of Jehovah, the Covenant keeping God. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. First Samuel chapter 10, we have a reference here. Let's look there. Now, if you don't get anything else, we can pack up, leave, and go home right now. And that's good enough to live off of all week. I said that's good enough to live off all week. Off all, all week. He says, the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of Je the Jehovah will come on thee, and thou shalt prophesy with them, and thou shalt be turned into another man. Oh, my. There's prophesying to Samuel here, but I am telling you by Samuel here, I want you to know that when the Holy Ghost comes in, when the Spirit of Jehovah comes in you, when the Spirit of the covenant keeping God comes on you, you're turned into another man, into another woman. You don't have to walk in defeat. You don't have to walk as you were. You don't walk as the New Testament says, that we walk as mere, you walk as mere men. You should be walking with God. You should be walking in the Spirit. You should be walking in the power of God. But the Bible says in the New Testament, it says, but you're walking like mere men. That one translation says mere men, mere unchanged men. But I want you to know there's a Spirit that God has sent to be on us. Hallelujah. A Spirit that will turn us into another man or another woman. Turn us into men and women of faith. Men and women of the Holy Ghost. Men and women of the covenant. Glory to God. Can I get a shout from somebody? Hallelujah. We're, 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 we're filled up with God to the point we walk in his covenant. We walk in his blessings. We walk in his benefit. Praise God. Hallelujah. And our lives are no longer the same, but they're filled up with God himself by his spirit. Praise God. And we know this, that when we approach the word of God, when we approach his promises, we approach his blessings, and we come in faith, he keeps covenant. He cannot lie. He will not deny. God cannot lie, and he will not deny, hallelujah. He will keep his covenant, glory to God. Hallelujah. Now you can go home. Hallelujah. He's the spirit of the Lord, Jehovah. Not only is he, the, he is the spirit of the one who keeps covenant, he is the spirit of the one who is Lord over your life. And you, know, you can see that it, was, it would have been the spirit of the Lord, Lord. 
He is the spirit of the Lord, of the Lord, the one who is our master, who looks over us. Oh, but thank God you can know this much. You can trust him. You can know that he'll do what he said he would do. You can know that you can trust him to fulfill what he said he would fulfill in your life. You, because he is a bread provider. He is good to you. He's full of tender mercies. He does exactly what he said he would do. Can you say amen to that? So he is the spirit of the Lord, but he is the spirit of the Lord of the one who keeps covenant. What's that mean? Although he is your Lord and he is your master and he, 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 he rules in your life as a Lord, he's the one who keeps covenant, which means he won't break his word. He won't break his oath. And he won't transform and he won't change. He'll do exactly what he said he would do. You won't show up and say, Lord, I've met the conditions of your word. I come in faith. I believe that I receive my healing. And he won't turn around and say, no, nah, I decided not to do that today because I'm just God. I can do whatever I want to do. No, my brother or sister. I said, no, hallelujah. He is the God who keeps covenant. He is your Lord. He is your master. He is your overseer of your spiritual life. But I want you to know he is also the one who is, keeps your covenant. And his spirit comes to reign and to rule in your life as the Lord of your life. But he keeps his covenant. Like I said in the previous point, he, he, he does not lie and he will not deny. He will not change. God says, I will not alter the thing that comes out of my mouth. Woo! Can I get a woo? woo! Can I get a glory? glory? Can I get a thank you, Jesus? Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 The God that keepeth covenant. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Next, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6. I think I got the wrong verse. Definitely got the wrong verse. Hallelujah. It's not 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6 either. Oh, well. We're going to talk about it. he's the spirit of the living God. How did that happen? Glory to God. I know that it says he, 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 he was, you know, spirit, get the, we're, we're um, living testimonies, but that's not the scripture. I was looking for one that said he's the spirit of the living God. We'll find it. Hallelujah. We'll come back and find that later. But anyway, he is the spirit. He's called the spirit of the living God. Now, the thought to this is this. He is, he, he is not the God. He is not the spirit. God, what's that? Three, three. Thank you. For as much as you're manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ, I probably was supposed to put three through six. Hallelujah. Minister by us, written not with hands, but with the spirit of the living God. Here's the, here is the thought of the spirit of the living God. He is not a thought. He is not an intellect, but the living God. Oh my, you did not get, listen, when you got baptized with the Holy Ghost, when you got born of the Spirit, you didn't get a thought, you didn't get an intellect, you didn't get a force, you didn't get a cosmic cloud, you got the living God moving in on the inside of you. Can you say amen? Full of the life of God, full of the presence of God, full of the anointing of God. Can somebody shout glory? glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's the Spirit of the living God. You know, we sing that song, Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Spirit of the living God. He is the living God. He's not the God that was dead. He's not the God. You know, Jesus died on the cross, but he was raised up from the dead. And Jesus said, I am he that liveth and is alive forevermore. Amen. I am he who was and is and is to come. Glory to God. That is how God is. God is, is always alive. God is a living God. The Holy Ghost who proceeds out of the Father and the Son. Glory to God. Is the living God. He is the spirit of the living God. He's not a statue on your shelf. Are you here? He's not a painting on your wall. He is the living God. He is alive, praise God. I said he is alive. And alive, alive. Jesus is alive. Amen? Alive forevermore. Alive, alive, alive forevermore. My Jesus is alive. Where is he? By his spirit, he abides in you, glory to God. And on the inside of you is life, and life more abundantly produced by the Holy Ghost. It's the spirit of the living God. That's enough to get, get, get shouting and get excited about it, isn't it, Jerry? Make you, make you want to run. Make you want to talk about how good God is. That on the inside of me this morning, he's alive. I'm not serving. Listen, I, I remember when I went to, um, to Thailand. You know, when I was in Bangkok ministering in the Bible school, you know, I found out, that, you know, how many of you have ever seen the little fat Buddhas? 
You know, most, most people see the fat Buddhas. That's because Buddha changed his method. He first tried to starve himself to find, find enlightenment. So you got sex, you have skinny Buddhas. Because skinny Buddha was starving himself to find enlightenment. He finally figured that wasn't it, so he started eating, thinking he could get, get, eat enough to find enlightenment. So he got really, really fat and got, thought, thought that was going to make him enlightened. I got news for you. It's not a statue. I said, it's not a statue. We don't worship statues. We don't worship idols made by the hands of men. We worship the true and the living God. Hallelujah, that when you come to him and receive Jesus Christ as Lord, he moves in on the inside of you. Glory to be to God. Amen. Hallelujah. And in your innermost being, the God himself, by his spirit, has taken up residence. That life that has moved in you is resurrection life. It's the life of God Almighty himself. Life in the absolute sense. Life as the Father possesses it. Life that he gave the incarnate Son to possess in himself, who in turn gave to us to have in us. Oh, hallelujah. I said, oh, hallelujah. His Spirit has brought that life to us. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 12 says, by one spirit are ye all baptized into one body. The Holy Ghost is the spirit of the living God. And right now, deep within your innermost being, the life of God flourishes. The life of God emanates. The life of God has possessed your spirit. Hallelujah. You're now alive unto God through faith in Jesus Christ. It's resurrection life. It's raising life. There's a law, the book of Romans says, called the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. And that law has made us free from the law of sin and death. I want you to know that that life will destroy sickness. That life will destroy uh, depression. That life will destroy anything that alienates you from the blessings of God. I want you that life is on the inside of you right now. Um, hallelujah. Are you here? John G. Lake was over in Africa in, in, in an outbreak of the bubonic plague, and he was there helping, helping the uh, people with the dead and trying to bury the dead. And, and uh, the, uh, the, the British medical frigate got there, and they came out, you know, because they had all kind of garb they had come up with. They came up with all kind of crazy garb back in those days. You know, you've probably seen the things with the little glass eye things and the snout that had charcoal in it and all this kind of stuff because they were trying to, any way they could to kill the viruses and stuff like that. And, and, and then Dr. Lake was just out there handling the dead bodies and stuff. And they said, Dr. Lake, you can't do that. You can't do that. So that's even after the people are dead, that's that virus. Virus is highly, highly, highly contagious. He says, sirs, let me show you something. He said, G give, me a, give me a microscope slide. And he went to somebody who died. When they would die, this froth would just kind of come out of their, their mouth because it was all up in the lungs and everything. And he took that slide and he swiped up a, 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 some of that froth and put it, he said, put it under the microscope and look at it. They said, oh, yeah, that's the bubonic plague bacteria. I mean, you know, or virus. I forget it's a virus or bacteria. I don't remember. But it's, it's just teeming in there. It's, just, it's all running around there. He said, now watch this. He took his hand and he wiped some of that off of somebody that died and wiped it on the side and said, look at this. They said, it's all dying. It's all, every bit of it's dying right here under the microscope. He said, that serves the law of the spirit of life that's in Christ Jesus, overcoming the law of sin and death. Glory to God. And I want you to know that spirit of God, the spirit of the living God, has brought that life to you this morning. Can you say glory to God? That life has been brought to you and imparted into you by the Holy Ghost. And that same life is on the inside of you. It's resurrection life. It's overcoming life. It's the life that we've been brought into through Jesus Christ. Glory to God. His spirit has produced it in us. <laughs> Can you say Amen. amen. And so you no longer have to live defeated. You no longer have to live under the, under the, the, the pressing uh, weight of Satan's oppression. But now because there's a law working in you and produced in you by the spirit of the living God. The spirit of the living God has enforced that into you. Has brought that to you. Now you can live as a king and a priest in this life. Glory to God. You can reign and rule as a king before heaven. Hallelujah. You can walk in the spirit. You can walk in the power of God. You can walk in an overcoming faith. Praise God. Because on the inside of you this morning. Morning. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has been brought into you by the spirit of the living God. Hallelujah. And on the inside of you, life reigns. Hallelujah. Woo. That ought to get a, 
at least the one Pentecostal chicken. <laughs> Glory to God. On the inside of us, the spirit of the living God. Amen? He didn't, you didn't get a thought. You didn't get a concept. You didn't get a, 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 a list of do's and don'ts. You got the living God. I read somebody the other day, um, someone who had been kind of preaching along the lines of a really crazy grace, and they've come back now. They said, if radical day, grace doesn't produce radical holiness, you've got a false grace. Why? Because in you, the life of God, that life that comes out of Jesus, that life that is, that is on the inside of you, it's resurrection life, and it lifts you above the ways of the world. It lifts you up into that whole, that, you remember, we, we, we read out of Romans, that you live in that whole new plane. We walk in newness of life. You know, we're to walk in newness of life. Weymouth says we're to walk in a whole new plane altogether. So the life of God on the inside of us. Can you shout glory? glory. Can I get a whom my mama? All right. Hallelujah. He's not only the spirit of the living God. He is the spirit of Christ. He is the spirit of the anointed one. Romans chapter 8 verse 9. But if you're, you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if so be the spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he's none of his. He is the revealer of the anointed one to us. The Holy Ghost reveals Jesus to you. The Holy Ghost reveals Jesus Christ, the Christ, the anointed one to you. He, he unveils him not just in the flesh. He unveils him who he is in the spirit. Do you understand? He, he unveils Jesus, the Christ. He is the revealer of him to you. John 16, 14. says, uh, uh, verse 13, how be it when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, and for he, not, he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. Glory to God. What, is it, what did he say? He's going to, what? He'll glorify me, and he shall receive of me, and show it unto you. He came to reveal Christ to you. He came to reveal the, the Christ, the anointed one, the spiritual side of Jesus' uh, being. He came to reveal him to you, the one who's anointed to destroy yokes and remove burdens, glory to God, the one who came to break the, the shackles of bondage off of your life. Jesus, the, the Holy Ghost has come to reveal him to you. He did not come to reveal to you the guy holding the lamb in the picture. See, everyone wants to major on he's meek and lowly. That's how he came. But he arose conqueror and Lord master over all the forces of darkness, glory to God. And now he is being revealed in you as the one who destroys the yokes and removes the burdens, glory to God. And is the king of kings and Lord of lords, hallelujah. That is who he is revealed as. He's not the guy holding the lamb. He's the one who defeated the enemy, glory to God. Amen. That's how he came. He came that way, but he resurrected as master and Lord, as the great conqueror, hallelujah. I said he rose as the conqueror, glory to God. Satan defeated. The spirit of the Christ has come to reveal him to you. He's to reveal him as the one who breaks the yokes and removes the burdens. The one working in you that puts you over the top, glory to God. That anointing that makes you the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath, glory to God. Can you say amen? I said, can you say amen? Hallelujah. John 15, 26, just, uh, just back a, a chapter. When the Comforter has come, whom the, the Father will send to my, uh, whom I will send from you to, unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth which proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. Hallelujah. See, when the Holy Ghost came as the Spirit of Christ, he came to testify of Jesus. Why? Jesus is the one who went to the cross. Jesus is the one who went down and defeated Satan in the region of the dam. Jesus is the one who took man's crown of glory back off of his head. Jesus is the one who resurrected and went and sat down at the right hand after he took his own blood into the Holy of Holies once and for all to obtain an eternal redemption for us. Jesus is the one who did that. And with all that, he turned around and gave authority to the church, made the church his, you know, the head, not the tail, put him above all principality, power, might, dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this world, 
but also in that which is to come. Made him king of kings and lord of lords. Hallelujah. And the Holy Ghost has come to testify and reveal him. Not just to you, but in you. Somebody shout hallelujah again. I said somebody shout glory again. Hallelujah. Praise God, praise God, praise God. And it is his work. Look at Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3. We got down to 6 of the 25. Y'all enjoying this? I told you I was going to be cranked up when I got over here. The pump got primed over there. You're getting in on the good stuff now. We're not, we're not getting any rusty water out or anything. You're getting all the good stuff. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Amen. Ephesians chapter 3, starting in verse 16, that he would grant to you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Hallelujah. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height and to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. That's who the Holy Ghost came to reveal in you. That you will be filled with all the fullness. Oh my. God, God's not trying to play keep away with what we have or who we are in Christ. He has sent the Holy Spirit to reveal the fullness. Everybody say the fullness. The fullness of what we have in Christ. Fullness of God on the inside. Well, what does that fullness include? We're born again. We've passed from death unto life. The nature of the Father now indwells us. The life of God's on the inside of us. The old man passed away and all things have become new. And all things are of God. And he who didn't know sin was made sin that I might be made the righteousness of God in him. Glory to God. I've been brought into right relationship. I've been brought into right standing. I've been brought into a right place with God. And now he abides in me and indwells me. And the fullness of God. It's imparted into my spirit so I can live a life that emulates the great creator, the mighty one, the eternal, the one who created heaven and earth, the one who declared all things that should be as they are, the one who spoke and the worlds were created, the one who formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into him and he became a living soul or a speaking spirit, the one who reigns preeminent as the potentate of all potentates, the one who reigns in all his glory, and the whole earth is full of his glory. Amen. The Holy Ghost has come to reveal his fullness in me and his fullness in you. Amen. That gets you out of depression. That'll beat the, beat the devils off of you. Amen. Hallelujah. And he's also, he is, he's, he's not only the spirit of Christ, he is the spirit of Jesus Christ. Philippians chapter 1. Just a couple of books over from where we are. Sorry. Backwards. One. Chapter 19, for I know that this shall turn my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. The thought here is that he's not only the Spirit of the carnate Word, Christ, he's also the Spirit of the incarnate Word, Jesus. Remember, Jesus was, became incarnate. He became flesh, covered. He was clothed in flesh. But the Holy Ghost is not only the spirit of the anointed one. He's the spirit of the one who came in the flesh. He covers all of it. Amen. What he wrought for you, what he accomplished for you through, through the flesh, the Holy Spirit has come to enforce in your life, to bring the past in your, say, my life. Oh, glory to God. I said glory be to God. Amen. I said, glory be to God. We, we, we just want to shout about what God's done for us. It's great to be a new creation being. It's great to be full of the life of God. It's great to be somebody different. Can you say amen? Because of the life of God on the inside of us. He's turned us into men. You know, that spirit of God, remember earlier, the spirit will come on us and be turned into another man or another woman. Romans chapter 8. I mean, sorry, six, well, Acts chapter 16. 
I'm sorry, I'll get there eventually. Acts 16, 6 and 7. I'm in Romans still. Praise the Lord. Now, now when they had gone through Phygera and the region of Galatia, were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia. And after they were come to My, My, Mycia, they were saved to go into Bithynia, and the Spirit suffered them not. Now, the, in the Revised Version, it says the Spirit of Jesus forbid them. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it just, it just clarifies the point that the Holy Ghost is in relation to the incarnate word just as much as he is to the carnate word. Now, carnate means not flesh clothed. Incarnate means enclosed in flesh. Amen. So the Holy Ghost is the Spirit of Christ. He's the Spirit of Jesus. Amen. Flesh or Spirit, He's His Spirit. He is the Spirit. Amen. Carnate Word or non-incarnate Word, He is the Spirit of Him. The Holy Ghost. There's not a different Spirit on the flesh of Jesus and that it was on the Spirit of Jesus. It's the same Holy Ghost. The same Holy Ghost that proceeds out of the Father. Can you say amen? Glory to God. Galatians chapter 4 verse 6. Amen. Galatians 4. Somebody say, I love God. I love the Father. I love the Son. I love the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And because of your sons, Galatians 4, 6, God has sent forth the Spirit of His Son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. This name describes the aspect of the Holy Spirit that testifies to our spirit that we are God's sons. See, as the, son of, as the Spirit of the Son, He's come to bear witness with your spirit that you're also sons. I'm so glad God didn't leave us in a pickle. I'm glad that God didn't leave us in a place where we weren't sure. I'm glad God didn't leave us in a place where we had to try to figure it out. He sent His Son to bear witness, to testify to you, that you, because you're born again, you're a child of God. I'm glad to be a child of God. I'm glad I'm not wondering. Anybody else glad you're not wondering? I'm glad I don't have to wonder. I don't have to try to figure out. I'm glad to know that the spirit of his son is testifying that I'm a son of God. We even cry out, Abba, Father. Amen. I said we cry out, Abba, Father. Praise God. Amen. Which The word Abba, they, the best they can come up with is something like Daddy. It's a term of effect, not just the father term, your father, but Daddy. You know, Father, you know, is talking about relation, but Daddy is, is the term of endearment. And the Spirit of God comes in, the Spirit of His Son, who bears witness to the Sonship of Christ as the Son of the Father, comes into your heart and bears witness with your spirit that you're a son or a daughter of God. So much so that you cry out of your heart, Daddy! He brings us into a different place in our relationship with the Father. To one of sweet communion and abiding with your daddy. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. To where he's not the God who's waiting to zap you, but he's the daddy who embraces you and loves you and entreats you and brings goodness to you and blessing to you. Somebody say hallelujah. All the spirit of his son testifying. Luke chapter 11. Glory be to God. I said Luke chapter 11. One of the names that we are the, the most familiar with in reference to the, to the spirit of God, to the third person of the Godhead. Probably the most relevant or most known name if ye then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? Now, we've, that, that word is translated sometimes Holy Ghost. And this, let me help you with the King James translators. If you see Holy Ghost, it, it, it tells you which translators translated that part of the King James Bible. Okay? Holy Spirit, both word spirit and ghost came out of the Greek pneuma, which meant spirit. But you had, they had the, go, the, the, go, the Gauls that were very superstitious, and they were part of the translation team, their scholars were. And you had the others, and it's different ones that helped translate the King James. There was over 60 scholars who did that, Hebrew and Greek scholars. But when that group that was translating that, that, their part of the Bible, they were kind of spooky spiritual, 
in their, their traditions. So when they got to the word pneuma, they said ghost. When the other guys got to the word pneuma, they said spirit. So when you see Holy Ghost, it's not a mistranslation. It's just they translate it because that's what the word meant to, to their culture. Spirit, pneuma, ghost. Okay? So when you say Holy Spirit or Holy Ghost, they're talking about, they're talking about the same person. Okay? This emphasizes the essential moral character of the Spirit. He is holy of and in himself. He's not putting on holiness. He is holy. Now I want to start, spend a little bit of time here this morning. He is the Holy Spirit. He indwells you. He abides in you. He is holy. Everybody say holy. He's holy. Too often we get revelations about how we can live and what we can do and how we can conduct ourselves. And we think we got a, we got a revelation of freedom and liberty. But remember, know ye not that ye are the temple of the Spirit, whose tabernacle, whose temple ye are. He's holy. When the Holy Spirit takes up residence, it should bring a holiness to our lives. It should bring an awe of the purity of God to us. So that we're not flippant about, well, I'm free in Christ. I can do whatever I want to do and still go to heaven. Oh, but the Spirit, of, the Holy Spirit is not telling you that. The Holy Spirit is not inviting you to live however you want to live. The Holy Spirit can be easily grieved. And let me say this, grieving the Holy Spirit is not just being, you know, too loud in church. I believe we grieve him much more by how we do things than we do by what we did in church by because we shouted at the wrong time or clapped at the wrong time. He's holy. And so in our lives, he looks in us, and he's come to produce holiness. You know, the Bible says this, without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Do you, what is written across the, the, the uh, sash or the vesture of Jesus as he's riding the horse in the book of Revelation? Does anybody know? Holiness to the Lord. Isn't that what it says? On his vesture? Holiness? He could have put righteousness. He could have put love. He could have put grace. Holiness is on him. Because we have to live. Let me say this. When we say I have to live a holy life, I'm not talking about you living out of your ability. The Holy Spirit has taken up residence. The Holy Spirit. Spirit is on the inside of you. The Holy Spirit, when you follow after him, will lead you into holiness. They that are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. And I can tell you, if he's leading you, he will lead you into what he is, holiness. Now, I'm not talking, I grew up Pentecostal holiness. I'm not talking about the beehive hairdos, and I'm not talking about the no makeup, and I'm not talking about, you know, if your dress is down to the floor, and, you know, and you can't see your toenails. Now, some folks need to at least stretch their dresses out a little bit. Right? You, can, you don't need to be wearing Donald Duck dresses. My daddy used to tell my sister she had a Donald Duck dress. You know what's that? He said, it's up to your quack. Some of y'all get that later. All right? Maybe if you can't bend over without going, uh-oh, you, it's too short. Hello? Hey, man, I don't want to see the, the, the gray hairs on your navel. With your, belt, with your shirt all down here with some gold on thinking you, you, you know, you're whatever. But dress isn't that. Now, let's say this. If you're living holy, you'll, know, you'll, you'll govern how you dress. Just out of your spirit. You'll know that things aren't right. You'll know that things shouldn't be done. You'll conduct yourself in a modest and appropriate way if, you, if, you're, if the holiness is coming out of you. Yeah, but it's stylish. Well, stylish don't make it right. There's a lot of things that are stylish. It's stylish to go get drunk. I don't make it right. Hello? But, but, but that would be a sad. You know, we, we always thought, you know, if we wore the right clothes. Now, like what Brother Hagin used to say, some of these folks were, were so holy on the outside, but they could sit in the living room and lick a spoon in the kitchen. Some of y'all just going, huh? Gossiping. Their tongue was so long, they were gossipers. 
But they could sit in the living room and lick a spoon in the kitchen, but they wore the right clothes. See, when, you're, when the Holy Spirit is manifest in you. Now, let me say something. See, some folks think that we, we say some of these things because we don't want you to have fun, and we don't want you to do this, and we don't want you to do that. Uh-uh. It's because when you're, when you're walking with the Holy Spirit, he wants to take you into places in God that you can't go otherwise. That you can't go flippantly. You can't go lightheartedly. He wants to take you into deep places in the, in the things of God. The one that searches and knows the mind of God. He knows, knows the deep things of God. The one who's abiding in you and dwelling in you. Him, the Holy Spirit. This is his essential moral character. He's holy. But there are places in God that you can only go when you're living in that holy life. What did God say? He says, uh, be holy even as I am holy. How are you going to go to his places if you're not letting the Holy Spirit work holiness in you? Amen. Yeah, but I still go to heaven and do what I want to do. Yeah, you might, but you ain't ever going to walk in the places that God had for you to walk. And I can tell you there are places to walk with God that are nothing like anything you'll ever experience here on the planet. You can live the lowest life or you can live the high life. And I ain't talking about Miller either. I'm talking about holy high life. Holy in God. Holy in the things of God. Holy in the presence of God. Walking to where you come to a place that you hear the angels and the seraphims crying out, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Who do you think is in the earth that is the glory of God? The Holy Spirit. The whole earth is full of God's glory. The, whole, the angels cried, holy, holy, holy. He is the Holy Spirit. He's not your Gumby and Pokey toy that you play with. Saw one of those at the, recently. I was at the mass market, mass general store up outside of a Blowing Rock. Went in there. They had a old, they had a Gumby and a Pokey, little ones that were kind of rubber with the wire in them. Yep. Started to buy it just to have it because I broke my last one. Not about forty years ago, but I broke it. Or no, more than 40, 40, 50 years ago, I broke it. I think I broke Pokey first because you bent him so much. The Holy Ghost is not your toy. He has come to bring the holiness of God and have it manifest in your life so you can walk in that whole new plane all together with God. Can you say amen? Father, we thank you for this service. Thank you that Jesus is our Lord. Thank you that we have the Spirit of God working in our lives and blessing our lives and causing us to walk with you in places that we only dreamed of. Now, Father, help us to grow in you. Help us to grow spiritually. Help us to grow in our walk with you, to put off flesh and to put on the Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit of God work in us mightily in the majestic and mighty and wondrous name of Jesus. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the giving online button thank you and may god richly bless you for your giving